Okay, welcome back to part three. Okay, uh, just a quick recap. Obviously, in the last episodes, uh, we fixed the... Uh, it was the receiver section. So it's now receiving on all modes. Um, still needs an alignment, but, um, you know, we can leave that to the end. But it's performing reasonably well. Okay, so if we look at this section here, you can see I've attached these fine uh, wires They're, it's just linking wire I, I use it for prototyping I find it's uh, it's pretty good it's pretty reliable and they they don't snap off you know under vibration so that's what happens with a lot of solid core wire but these seem to, to be quite good so obviously what was here was two trimmer um, resistors and there was various components and what this is doing is the ALC circuit for the single sideband. So the idea is it monitors the output from the power, main power amplifier and it'll just make sure that we don't overload the transmitter. So it keeps it, you know, it's like a throttle, I guess. It's just a throttle it back. It's an ALC circuit, you know, it's automatic limiting. So it's very important that that's here and working correctly. And also on the potentiometers, what these do, they set the high and low level of the single sideband transmissions. So what I, obviously I've connected these wires, I've got a, a little board I've made, uh, which I'll show you in a second, um, that these wires will connect to. And I've also removed these capacitors here. They were, pretty badly damaged from what looks like the soldering iron whenever whoever did this um, inadvertently wrecked these capacitors too I, I removed them and they've been venting leaking stuff on the bottom so I, we're gonna have to replace those okay, so these are the two capacitors that uh, I don't know if you can see that but yeah that uh, I'll take now I've got some Rubicon capacitors here from uh, made in Japan and they're from an RS component so I know that they're genuine parts um, yeah I just don't buy stuff off eBay anymore because it's it, a lot of the stuff isn't genuine you know it's just counterfeit <laughs> ultimately it's crap okay so and I've made this board and we've got our two potentiometers on here there's a diode and if you look on the underside you see there's some surface mount components and there's some through hole components capacitors and and whatnot um i, I the reason i've done that is it's, it's literally what i've got to hand so uh but that the idea is this is these are on plastic standoffs and i can actually put that in the the radio and probably araldite it to the circuit board i think this is the most challenging part of, of all the damage so I thought well, I'll tackle that first and hopefully it's all downhill from there okay so if we look on the circuit diagram this is the section here that that uh, that board's replacing so what we've got is single sideband low power which I think is probably this one and this is your, your standard RF power. So these are quite critical. So what I've done, I've just, these components were all missing. So I've just made the board up and we've got the fine wires actually connect to the, the little board and, you know, connect into the radio. Now I've tested it point to point. It's gonna be very difficult to test uh, without, you know, the radio actually transmitting, but, you know, we'll get to that. Hopefully we'll get to that stage. Okay, hey, time for an update. Well, we've got some good news and we've got some bad news. So I think we'll start with the good news first. So if we zoom in, if it'll zoom in, come on. Okay, we've got a little, uh, little daughter board that we've made up for the ALC. Um, now I've got it mounted in. I've actually, it's actually mounted on, um, I've just, it's double-sided sticky. Uh, tape 
it's a foam, you know, it's the stuff that's oh got it's no more nails, it's called. <laughs> But it's, uh, it works really well. So, uh, yeah, it was quite easy. I didn't have to mess around with epoxy resin. Okay, so, as you can see, you can see where all the the tracks have all gone and uh, the, the components are missing. And obviously, these are the fine wires connecting up to the little daughter board. Now, there was a couple of through holes. Um, you know, they're that were open circuit so what i've done i've you know i've just managed to fix those by putting a, a you know a piece of copper wire through and soldering them both sides but everything checks out point to point correctly which is good i know it looks a bit like a dog's dinner in there but but i think that's going to work really well. and i've also managed to sort out the bias here for the driver um, transistor so there was a diode missing and there was but the, uh, luckily there was a lot of the tracks were still there the only real problems were the tracks connected to the trim potentiometer so I've actually man man managed to mount this one in it's quite solid um, the original was 470 ohms I've put a 500 ohm um, pot in there it's fine I've tested it, it's it's all working, which is good news. Now, obviously, further up here, I reckon I can actually fix that as well quite easily. That, that's not going to be too bad to fix. Now, for the bad news. Still around the same area, if we actually look at this uh, driver device, it's a 2SC2078. And I noticed it wasn't pulling any current when I tried to do a bias check on it. And then I took a closer look at it. And if you actually look, you can see that. You can see the inside is it's melted. So this thing's obviously been up to some serious amount of heat, which would make sense because I found a lot of the components shorted out. So I'm going to put some wire across some of the components that are in there to control the bias. So it, this thing must have been just switched full on. You know, and obviously I think it's just something's going to have to give and it's, and it's, it's gone open circuit. Okay, keep watching the green LED. Now I'm going to put this into transmit mode. See, do you see how it changed colour? It was red and now it's changed to like a, a greeny orangey colour. Let's take that off and... Yeah, it's staying like it now. Um, now there's a problem. Um, I'll need to show you with a multimeter, but the RX8 is not switching off properly. And I think it's from when we had the problem with this IF transformer pulling all the current from the RX8 rail. And I think what it's done, it's overloaded the actual switching device. Okay, so that's our RX8, and I'm obviously picking that up in the front end. And if I go to transmit, see so it went down now, it's come back up. So that's why the light on the front was changing color because the it's a dual color LED, so the green's on with the red, so it gives you like an orangey sort of green color but that's failing so what we can do is have a look at the well, I'll show you I, I, I think I know what the problem is so if we look here this is our RX8 rail and what this does it switches up everything that's to do with the receiver in when we're in receive mode and when we're in transmit mode that will switch off and how it works is, we've got an, an 8 volt regulator here, which is creating an 8 volt rail. We've got the main switching device, which in this case is a PMP uh, transistor. We've got a little pull up resistor here. So what happens is, if there was nothing here, that would pull up to positive and this will switch off. But if we take this low, this will switch on. 
So what we've got here is, there's another NPN device here. And basically what happens is, and that's being pulled high. <laughs> it's a bit complicated. <laughs> so that's being pulled high. So what's happening is, if that's pulled high, that will switch on. And if that switches on, it will pull this section low. And in turn, we'll pull this low, switch this on, and then we've got our RX-8 rail. You got it? <laughs> okay. So what we have here, this is the RX-TX switch. Now this breaks off into two sections. Now I imagine that's the TX-8 uh, switching device. Well, it says it, I know it is. So what we are using is two diodes to separate them. This line here goes high when you're in transmission mode. I'm going to switch that on and it will pull this low. And if this goes low, it's essentially this switches off and this section goes high and then that switches off the RX-8. Well, that's what's supposed to happen. Now there's a bit of a problem because obviously when you use PN junctions, they've got about a 0.7 of a volt um, drop across them. So, so when this is switched on, if you put the meter here, you'll see about 0 0.65, 0 0.7 of a volt. But that's enough to switch this on. So, but the thing is, this isn't an ordinary transistor. And inside it, it's actually got a resistor network. It's designed specifically for switching. So what the issue is with the radio is this has gone leaky. So it's a little SOT23 device, and I'll show it in a sec, but it, it's gone leaky. I've taken it out because as it's gone leaky, what it's doing is it's not switching this off properly. Hence, that's why we were getting the green light which is and the red light on at the same time the leds because this wasn't switching off all this section's working correctly but that's this isn't and i think what's caused it is just they're only tiny you know signal devices and i think this has been going quite hard when we had the problem with the if can so i think that's probably what's caused it Okay, let's take a look at the data sheet of this device. Okay, so this is a KRC120S. And if we look at it, you see we've got, it's a normal MPN transistor, but we've got these two resistors here. Now that's a, a div divider network. so. We can actually calculate from the value of these two resistors. Obviously, R1 is it? And actually, yeah, it's 4.7, and R2 is 10k. Oh no, we've got the wrong one. Okay, you yeah, know it's this one, is it? It's 10 and 4.7, so it's 10k. That's 4.7. But what that does when we've got that 0.7 of a volt, that will take that down below the switch-on threshold of this transistor. Because remember, this needs about 0.7 of a volt to switch it on. So that will reduce the voltage at that point. So this thing will be switched off. And then, you know, we we bring the power, power back up and then it will be switched back on. So 0.7 of a volt here will still switch this off. And normally you'd put those in the circuit it even says here look simplified circuit design reduce the quantity of parts in the manufacturing process this transistor here that's the pmp device that's the the main switching transistor i've tested it that's fine um and this is the little switching uh so t23 device that's I'm not going to put a meter in it, but it's leaking. If you put a meter across it, you can see the it's got a collector uh, to emit a leak. Um, and that's what's causing the problem. Okay, so just for the time being, I've just tagged in a, a 2N222 transistor to replace that. Um, and there's obviously a couple of little grabby leads coming off. And if you look down here, you can see that there's two resistors there, which I've... Um, it's just emulating. So if we go to switch now, 
switching over properly. And if we we can see this on the multimeter, hang on if I can find the Okay, so I'm now on the RX8. I'm just tied into something in the front end. If you look on the meter, hopefully you can see that. So if we go to transmit mode, the light turns red and we go down to just a few millivolts. So yeah, which is correct. So that is now working. I need to order the correct part. The top and take me, they don't cost a lot to uh, to buy, but you've got to, you want the correct part, so I'll need to order one. Okay, so if we just do a bit of an update and conclusion. Now, there's a number of parts I need to order. I need to, there's a, here, this is to do with the carrier oscillator. There's a common cathode uh, diode pack that's for switching. So I need one of those. We need this transistor for the, um, it's the DC switching of the RX, it's the RX8. Um, but I've gone through and I've given this quite a thorough test. So one of the other things I was concerned about was the regulator. There's a regulator um, transistor that's under here. And basically what that does, it supplies the voltage rails to the driver transistors and it also modulates the AM modulation onto uh, onto these devices. There's a bit of a way of doing it, but that's the way they do it with CBs. Um, but that tests all fine. I don't have a problem with it. I think I think there's nothing wrong with it. We're getting it's working correctly. Um, the other concerns that I had was the obviously the TX strip here. Um, I thought this was TXIF, it isn't from here, it's just bandpass filters and some impedance changing at the end here. Um, all the LOs are present and correct, we've got a nice strong signal at the end here. Uh, I've been injecting audio through the audio path and I'm getting, uh, you know, the balance modulators working, I'm getting some nice waveforms, it's nice and strong at this point. Um, everything is testing out fine, which is <laughs> which is actually quite nice to find something that actually works. Um, but that all seems to be working fine. So I'm quite confident once we get the parts, we need to get that in and rebuild this. But I now I've looked at it, I uh, and I understand it now. I think that's not going to be such a problem. Um, and then it's going to be a case of obviously gently bringing it up and and aligning it. The, the other concern I've got is obviously the power output devices, which, um, you know, for obvious reasons, if they're bad, but they look okay on the multimeter. You can only test, you know, I can only test a little bit of them because of, you've got these coils and, and stuff. But normally when these, these go, these are bipolar uh, RF power transistors from Toshiba, they normally go short circuit and they really do go. So, I've got a feeling they're okay. So uh, I know assumptions are not a good thing with this radio. So <laughs> it's not good to make assumptions, but I think they're okay. And I think all we need is obviously we've got to replace these, uh, this driver, this 2078 and this, I think it's RD16 HHF1, which I've got on order. But I reckon she'll come up. I think it's, I think it's going to be a goer. Uh, I'm, yeah, everything else is looking fine. I've, I've gone through pretty much everything. The only things I haven't tested is the some of the, I haven't tested the FM modulation. Um, I noticed this thing's got like an echo or something on there. I've got no idea. I've not had that engaged. I don't know if that works. I'll, I'll possibly take a look at it. Um, but um, yeah, but uh, I think we're in good shape. We're in a lot better shape than uh, we were. And uh, I'm quite confident this is this is going to come back. So, uh, okay, well, thanks for watching the video, and um, we'll catch you in the next one.